Welcome you to land and welcome to the Get In and Get Out Nintendo Podcast, episode 15, baby. Of course, I am your host, Dantes, and joining me, like always, the man, the legend, Caliones. What's up, Caliones? How you doing? Hey, hey, uh, so excited that I almost got ahead of, um, of myself, but how you doing, Dantes? How you doing, everybody? And... Uh, very excited. We have, I believe, 18 pieces of new today, so we're going to be discussing them. Plus, uh, we have the topic of the week as well. Uh, so, you know, just excited to get it started. Go ahead, Dante, just get it on. We're ready to rumble! So, Caliones, first question, like always, what have you been playing? Uh, I mean, just uh, continue to play in the Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Uh, also, you know, been playing some uh, Splatoon 2 as well. Uh, you know, my son, he's been wanting me to play some, you know, Sonic and a couple of other games, so, you know, just, you know, catching up on those, uh, but, yeah, I, I really want to try to 100% Mario Rabbids, it, it's uh, that good of a game. So, I've been playing it, too. I finally defeated World 1. That's how slow I've been playing and progressive in this game. So, I got Luigi. Uh, I like Luigi. It's pretty cool. Uh, we'll see what uh, comes next. I think next world is the Desert World. Uh, I, I know that... Uh, uh, a lot of people already beat the game and <laughs> way ahead of me, but I've been playing more Ch Uncharted, Caliones. So I'm sorry about that. I know I'm, 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 I'm I don't want to offend you. I just want to get the plat first <laughs> from Uncharted. And for Uncharted, I did beat the game, so now I just need to clean up some final trophies. So a fun game, but but not my favorite Uncharted. But we'll we'll discuss that in more detail better on our our live show every Saturday at 9:30 p.m. Eastern Time. Anyway, Caliones, since I already kind of started the rigmarole, should I continue with it? <laughs> yeah, just go ahead and keep on rolling. Keep, keep on, on rolling, rolling, baby. Rolling, rolling, rolling. No, I don't want to start singing that crappy song. Anyway, uh, I want to thank everybody to, for joining us today at the Get In and Get Out Nintendo Podcast, episode 15, every Monday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Doesn't matter if Hurricane Irma is going our way. We'll be delivering this podcast no matter what happens. Please remember to subscribe, like, and comment so you can make these two crazy motherfuckers happy. Also remember, if you don't want to see our ugly faces, well, we got a solution for you. Download this podcast on iTunes and SoundCloud for free. Also, please remember to rate us over there so you can show us some love. Also, we do have a small Facebook page called at Forcing Unison Gaming. And finally, and Dante says finally, go to ChigueroSNews.com and give some clicks and love to my boy Caliones. With all that said, let's start the show. So Caliones, I said, are you ready? So for the no one in attendance, and the two, three, maybe four people washing around the way. Let's get ready for Reggie's new center. My body, my body is ready. This is a new, so we're going to be discussing those. And let me go ahead and get started with the first one. So we have uh, previously, previously announced to be coming to the Nintendo Switch back in January and quickly dismissed as, a, as just a rumor. Rockstar has finally confirmed that LA Noir is indeed coming to the Nintendo Switch, as well as the PS4, Xbox One, and HTC Vive. Uh, the Nintendo Switch version will take advantage of the gyro as well as the motion controls, even hinting at the possibility of using the portable as part of the detective work. Should the Switch fans be excited that Rockstar is finally releasing a game on the Nintendo console since Table Tennis on the Wii? <laughs> Good one there, Caliones. Uh, so... Yeah, it should be excited, but let's go to the next news, and then we'll piggyback the whole conversation because I think it's bigger than than just are we just happy that the <laughs> Switch version is coming. But anyway, go to the next one. Uh, yes, Dantes, but this is the other side of the coin where it's always something. So we have the Eleanor version. Uh, the Nintendo Switch version of Eleanor is going to retail for $10 more than the other versions, making it fifty dollars instead of forty dollars so is the nintendo switch tax something that we should all get used to from now on seeing how this games and the others have been doing okay so 
here's the like interesting. So let's I'll go with phase one and then you can talk about it. I think it's good news that we <laughs> the Switch is getting a Rockstar game. I did play LA Noir. I platted LA Noir, so I know it's a good game. I thought it was a fun game. Even the DLC with the extra cases was really good. Uh, and it really engrossed me in the story. Now, the ending was kind of <laughs> crappy. I don't want to uh, say anything. I'm just going to tell you it's not a good ending. But the motion capturing on the face animations was ahead of its time when this game came out, Calione. So a lot of people were like, you know, that's how you figure out who was telling the truth and, and who was telling a lie when you were inter inter <laughs> when you were questioning people. Can't pronounce in into anyway. You know what I mean? Interact, uh, <laughs> interact, <laughs> questioning. Uh, when you were questioning people, so so it it, it it was a really a game ahead of its time. So great game, great, awesome game. I think that's good. It's coming to the to the Switch. Again, the selling point, the Switch being portable. You can take this game anywhere. You can play it anywhere. I think that is one of the selling points of the game, no matter how you look at it. So the question you as a consumer is going to be, are you willing to pay $10 more for the game to make it portable? So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to let you answer that, Kalionis, because I got another another point that I want to bring after that, which is the, the bad side of this. But go ahead, Kalionis. Okay, so yeah, uh, I mean, as far as the game itself, I'm really excited that we're finally getting one. Like I said, last one was, you know, Table Tennis on the Wii. And I'm not counting, you know, like, uh, you know, Grand Theft Auto Shine Wars on the uh, DS uh, because it, it was a handheld. I'm, I'm saying more of, uh, of, you know, on the console side of things, but I'm very excited for Eleanor. I, you know, when the rumors first came out, um, of course, it's not uh, Grand Theft Auto, it's not Red Dead Redemption, but still. Uh, it is a really good game. It has great scores overall on Metacritic. And like you said, it's one of those games that was ahead of his time. Uh, so what I, I mean is, is uh, two sides on this. One, I'm really excited that the game is coming. If the game would have been announced only for the Nintendo Switch and not for any other console, and you would have said, okay, so it's going to be $49.99. They're adding you know, gyro controls. They're adding the motion controls. They're adding... Uh, you being able to have your switch and and use it as you know as, as part of detective work, uh, I would have been more than happy and be like, okay, so yes, uh, get this game, you know, support Rockstar, and but since they um, basically announced it alongside the PS4, Xbox One, and the um, the HTC Vive version, then and then you know that it's going to be ten dollars more, then it, it becomes a little harder, you know, okay. to be able to support so, it. Either way. So here he goes. Let's go to that because that's the next yes. step that I wanted to take it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you can yeah, go, so ahead. The, yeah, the, go ahead. To your I'm... point, I think it's great. The Switch version has some some features that I think are unique enough that maybe as a Nintendo owner, if you did not play this game, there's some people out there that only play Nintendo uh, consoles. I don't know how you guys can survive because uh, I need my third-party support. But if, if, if you're only a Nintendo console user, this is a great opportunity to play this game, support Rockstar, show them that they can bring more games like Grand Theft Auto. So it's almost like all this all these third-party companies are testing you guys. And like I said in this podcast many times, I am really proud of you guys because I always gave you guys shit for not buying games like No More Heroes, like Mad World, stuff like that that came from third parties that needed your support and, and, and to show that there was a market even for Nintendo owners because Nintendo fans have a bad rap of just buying Nintendo games, right, Carlyonis? And I think that needs to change. And this game, this opportunity for you guys to show that. But here's the bad part. If you have a PlayStation like me, this, is, this game is going to come Ultra HD, right? So it's going to have 4K. It's going to have you better... You about the facial animations. Yeah, better, better frame rate, right? And then it's $10 less, and I get a chance to play it again. So for me, it's like... Hmm, do I buy it portable so I can have fun with it on the go or my trophy uh, uh, slot uh, <laughs> ways make me buy the game again with higher frame rate because the Switch version is not going to get 60 frames, right? And I don't know if they have announced 60 frames to clarify it on the on this on oh, this on, yeah, they have on, not. on it. So, yeah. that's a key for me. But you could easily then buy the PC version, but the PC port was really bad when it came out. So, I don't know how good it is now. But I, the, well, um, the, the game. you can't really call it a PC version. Uh, it's just it's gonna be a VR version. So it, it sounds no, no, like I'm talking. I'm only... talking when the game came out, yeah. Calionis. It was it, it oh. came on PC, but the PC port was like bad as like Batman Arkham Knight bad. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people did not. Yeah. Really yeah, good. exactly. So it did not, you know, buy it or comp you know, uh, return the game X, Y, and C. So because PC gamers, to their credit, they complain and they get shit done better than any console gamer. But 
Okay, to get to go to that, then you have the VR version. Now it's not coming to PlayStation VR; it's coming to the Vive, and I'm guessing it's coming to the Vive because you need a stronger VR system to to run this game. That's that's the truth. But as a con let's take away the VR portion. As a console gamer, ten dollars more. Is it worth it if you have a PlayStation and Xbox One? That's what I think is a struggle, Kalion, is to pay ten dollars more just for the Switch version. Okay, well, uh, so I, I think it's um, it breaks down to this. Like you said, if it's somebody that only has the Nintendo Switch and doesn't have any other other consoles, then there's nothing really else to t think about. Uh, they have added enough you know things on there, even though they haven't really you know like detailed it uh, for us. But the game's going to be releasing in November, so it's going to be one of those you know two big releases for Nintendo in November. Alongside, um, I think it was um, is it Skyrim uh, also releasing in November? Probably, but I think it's yeah. going to be those. Yeah, so those two. Uh, there's no, no other games announced for November uh, from Nintendo unless they finally give a release date for Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which they haven't. But if it's just a matter of being a Nintendo only person, then or owner, then go ahead and get the game. But if it breaks down to like you said, you have an Xbox One, you have a PS4, uh, you're a trophy hunt, uh, hunter then the portability, the having the other emotions, uh, the gyros, the detective uh, work and things like that, it might not be enough uh, to persuade you into getting that, plus the other $10 more uh, on the Switch. So uh, those are the ones that really have to think long and hard about getting the game on the Switch. But for anybody else that only owns a Switch, uh, it, sh it should be. I mean, because um, either it's still you know, $10 more, but it's still um, a similar, but different experience you know catered for uh for the console itself so at least um i like that rockstar they're just not doing it's not just a port of the game but they're adding things that are specific uh for the console so i i, I mean at the end of the day we have to support them and because they've kind of like fifa they've done enough to warrant us you know warrant our support it's not gonna it's not like the wii u days where uh the ports were you know horrible and not worth it and price Fifty, forty dollars more than you know the the other games that were already, uh, you know, like in the clearance bin. Uh, but I, I feel like me, uh, I currently I have given up on the PS4 because of Final Fantasy 14 and spending too many hours playing it. Uh, but in in the Xbox One, I'm not really, um, I don't really care about uh, you know doing anything on the on any achievements on the Xbox One. On a PS4, is for me is better because it's more clear and invites you to do it. But um, if um, I'll get the game, I'll get it on the Switch anyways um, as a Switch owner. But for you, that's something that you really have to think long and hard. And and if you were to decide right now, what version of the game would you get? So I honestly am designing right now. Uh, in reality, right now is I'm not gonna play it again. I spent a lot of hours in that game, and the, uh, my backlog, Calion, is so huge. That it's like, do I really want to go and spend time in a game that already did everything and, you know, and did the achievements and all that stuff, did all the missions, did everything, find all this, you know, the hidden shit. I don't know. For me, it's really hard. This is also a hard a, a discussion for everybody who played this game, right? Already played this game. Are you, are you willing to play it again? Uh, because, again, if you're a PlayStation owner, is, is 4K 60 frames, if they, again, if they give it 60 frames, is it worth it for you? I don't know, not not I don't know, not for me. But if I have to choose a voice version to buy, I probably would buy the PlayStation version because again, I am involved in that ecosystem more than even the Nintendo ecosystem. I am really involved in the Nintendo ecosystem too, in a sense that I am one of the problem that I buy Nintendo systems for Nintendo games, right? But as you know, Kalionis, I've been trying to buy more third party games on the on the Switch. You know, I bought Sonic Mania on the Switch. I bought Seber on the Switch. You know, it's, I, I've been strategically buying games that I think are worth their in the Switch that are meant for the Switch, right? So I I could change my mind. I'm just saying that I, I don't think I'll play the game again. It'll be tough again to play it. But but we'll see what happens, Kaliana. Let's move to the next one. Oh, and moving over, uh, with this one, uh, of course, you know, the Japan, they released their sales numbers. Uh, so we have the Nintendo Switch this past week sold 50,000 more uh, units, and the Nintendo 3DS sold an additional 26,000. Not only that, but um, Splatoon 2 sold a total of 53,000 more, basically one for every single uh, Switch sold, and it's up to 1,056,000 units. Uh, then we had 
Monster Hunter Double Cross. Uh, they sold an additional 27,000 and it's up to 111,000 copies sold, uh, which for me, it's, um, it, it's, it's pretty decent. It's not a, big, a, a huge drop and it's kind of like slowly, little by little continuing. So hopefully by at the end of the uh, its life cycle, it's going to end up somewhere over like 200 or 250,000 uh, copies sold. Um, then uh, we have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, uh, 12,000 more for a total of 672,000. Uh, we have ARMS with an addition of 5,183 for a total of 214,000 in Japan, which is a pretty good number. Uh, and we have The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild selling 4,900 um, copies more for a total of 576,000. Um, nope. So uh, just for everybody out there, uh, the number one selling game uh, this past week was Everybody's Golf, uh, which was 100,000, uh, and it sold that for the PS4. So uh, what do you think about the sales um, on the Switch and the games, uh, Dante? Good, good, good numbers. I don't want to dwell too much in it because it feels like, again, we the Japan numbers come weekly and we always seem to talk about it. Nintendo's doing yeah. great. All the, all the games are doing great. Uh, but I'm more interested in the following news. They're going to they're gonna be interesting when we come out of it. But, yeah, no, good numbers all around. All Nintendo games are selling in Japan. Splatoon is doing great. Uh, Breath of the Wild is doing great. Even ARMS, I think, is doing pretty well. So, you know, give props where it's due. So, good job, Nintendo. Okay, so uh, moving on, we have uh, Takashi Moshizuki. Uh, he's from the Wall Street Journal in Japan. And if you don't have him on Twitter, go ahead and follow him. I do follow him, and uh, from time to time, he does have... Uh, well, he follows you know, the Nintendo um, Switch and you know, the gaming industry as, as a whole. But he's reporting that uh, Monster Hunter Double Cross for the Nintendo Switch has shipped 200,000 units in Asia, um, 200,000 of those in Japan, and the remaining uh, 100,000 in, in the, uh, the remaining territory. So uh, is that um, good numbers uh, to be shipped? If not, uh, what, do you, what do you think of those? I think they're pretty good numbers. I just don't know if they're Monster Hunter numbers, right? So, I think it's good. I think the game is not that expense, expensive. It's a port, right? So, it probably didn't cost Capcom too much. So, Capcom is fine with it. I think once Capcom releases it in the West, they're going to be happier because let's just say they pick up another 300,000 to 400. If they sell like a million copies of this game being a port, I think, I think Capcom will be happy. I don't know. Hopefully, they'll stop uh, doing that shit where they're uh, basically uh, saying every time, well, we're looking to see how the game does. So we can continue support with the Switch. Don't keep doing that to your consumer base. You know, if you're going to support the Switch, just support the Switch, Capcom. Yeah. So uh, moving over to the next one. Uh, we have the other uh, sell chart, uh, but this time it's from the UK. Um, Uncharted Lost Legacy was number one. So Mario Rabbit's Kingdom Battle debuted at number two over at the UK chart. And I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Uh, based on you know, the UK, it's not really a big Nintendo supporter. So for Mario Rabbit's uh, Kingdom Battles will be there at number two, and for a game that everybody was questioning way before E3 and way before you know it was you know, uh, first officially leaked. So I'm I'm really happy with how the game has done. Of course, uh, you, see, you have Grand Theft Auto at number four, uh, you know Crash Bandicoot number five, Everybody's Got Six, Ark Survival Evolved Seven, Yakuza Eight, Overwatch Nine, and Forza Horizon Three Ten. So. Um, would you say that's a good? Uh, those are good numbers for Mario Rabbids, A good position in the UK. Yeah, and, and to clarify, that's why I put that news in there. I know Calion is probably thinking he put it in there because Uncharted was number one. No, in reality, I put it. No, in, I know. That. In reality, I put it in there because uh, Europe is a Sony territory. It is. We have to give credit where credit is due. Sony owns the territory. If you see that list, you have Uncharted, you have Yakuza, you have Crash Bandicoot. All all of them exclusives right now to this point. Crash Bandicoot, I, I know. It, it's probably a time exclusive, but it's exclusive at this point. So, and then and then the other classics in Grand Theft Auto Five and games like that that just keep selling everywhere. Uh, and then uh, and, you know and, and and this also shows to Microsoft. You see, Forza Horizon is number ten. Exclusives matter, Microsoft. So you better you know put a little bit more effort in that area. But what I wanted to say is that the reason I put it is that Mario and Rabbits was number two in UK chart. That is pretty damn good in my opinion because. I think that game, to me, I, I, I keep saying I hate the rabbits. That game would be way more fun if I didn't see those fuckers. But, but, a good game is a good game, and it was, will sell. And, I, again, Nintendo owners are buying the games. This gen seems to be a good attach rate on every every game. And this game may have, and Ubisoft may be really happy with it. And I could foresee Nintendo saying, but wait, 
we don't have to carry the switch ourselves if we strategically take our IPs and give it to good developers here and there and we make business uh, uh, partnership with them, they can build other games for us, exclusive for us with our IPs and then we can keep building on the Switch and saying, look how many games the Switch has because in the Wii U, what hurt the Wii U, the Wii U was carried by Nintendo. But I think Nintendo is testing the waters with this uh, partnership and this partnership could be really good and could end up showing Nintendo that they can keep doing this. Imagine uh, if Rockstar or, I don't know, someone like that, or uh, Bethesda takes a, a, a Zelda Breath of the Wild game and they can build it and make it like a Skyrim type of game, which in a sense they're kind of doing it with Skyrim, but, uh, you know, its own a IP, a new Zelda game. Nintendo can work on the main Zelda game and you can have a side Zelda story with its own world built by Bethesda. I think Nintendo is onto something here and they should keep doing this Sony does it all the time. Insomniac is not their first party games, but they gave Insomniac Spider-Man. And they've done Ratchet and Clank for many years. And games and IPs that Sony owns, they've been giving it to other developers. And I know Insomniac made Ratchet and Clank. It's just that Sony had a bad deal with, with them. But my point to that is that Nintendo could you take advantage of this. I don't know how you feel about that, Colin. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, we're saying it with Mario Rabbit's uh, Kingdom Battle. You're saying it with Sega and Sonic Mania. So it's uh, games that are receiving uh, great, uh, you know, critical reception. Uh, and as far as we know, it's in, you know, based on the charts, and Mario Rabbit Kingdom Battle will be doing good. Sonic Mania did uh, really good as well. And it's something that if Nintendo, um, I know they're very protective of their their IPs. And it's something that after you know the Super Mario movie, I mean, of, of course they're 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 going to protect it because. That movie could have destroyed the Mario brand, and somehow, some way, it didn't. Uh, and I'm glad it really didn't. But um, even though they're really protective, you now have uh, video games, but you also have the Universal Studios deal that they're uh, working on. Uh, then you have rumors about either, I mean, Sony Pictures or Netflix or somebody like that producing. Um, I mean, Nintendo IP movies uh, and, and so many other things that, you know, they can uh, dominate with those IPs. But like always, they're a company that's over 140 years old. Uh, they have those IPs which are dear to their hearts. And they're, they really, really, really don't you know, let anybody just work on them. So in uh, Ubisoft's case, they did, you know, this is something that we did talk about. Uh, Nintendo's very open to having other companies, you know, pitch, uh, go to them and show them, um, I mean, ideas for the games, but this is the very first time that uh, Mario, uh, you know, the Mario IP was used in a game like this, uh, you know, this magnitude, and not controlled by Nintendo at all. Uh, so it worked out, uh, and I and hopefully it's something that they'll continue doing. Yep. Agree. So I'm I'm all for Agreed, it. Agree, Agree. Okay, so and moving over to uh, next piece of news, and this tells you how hard it is to find the Nintendo Switch. We have. The Final Fantasy 15 director, Hajime Tabata, he said that he's been actively looking for a Nintendo Switch and he cannot find it anywhere. Uh, they were, you know, they, uh, he was you know, uh, talking with uh, Kotaku and he, they asked him because he did say that he had recently talked to Nintendo, so why not just ask Nintendo for one? But he did say that uh, he doesn't want Nintendo to you know, give it to him because then he'll owe Nintendo and, and he doesn't want to be, you know, he doesn't want to owe somebody, he wants, he wants to be in the middle. Um, but it's it's kind of funny that you have the director of Final Fantasy that he already got Zelda, he already bought Mario Kart, he already bought Splatoon 2, but he still hasn't found the Switch. So what do you think about that? So if I was Nintendo uh, reading this news, I would just send him one and say, you take it, you bring Final Fantasy 15 to the Switch, brother. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, Nintendo, <laughs> listen to the man, send him the Switch. <laughs> And and just make sure that uh, instead of writing one of those I O U things, uh, don't don't include it. Just say it's it's on the house. It's on the house, exactly. Just it's on make it feel better. Make make it feel better. Just say, hey, just this is this is your uh, Godfather favor. <laughs> just don't drop the dead horse in his bed later on. <laughs> but then uh, moving along, this um, we're just gonna breeze through it because this is gonna be our our topic of the week. Uh, we have you know, Reggie say that well, actually. This is not the topic of the week, but it's Reggie talking about it. And it's on the same interview. But so I'll go ahead and talk on this you know, on this one first. Uh, basically, um, uh, he was talking about you know two variety, 
and about the uh, the switch and if it's going to be available during the holidays and uh, there's they said that they're basically um, focused on uh, the availability so let me just give you the, the exact quote he said certainly the demand is there and our supply chain is there to hit the 10 million dollar uh, 10 million goal uh, for the units that's uh, what Kimi Chino said uh, previously and he, he did uh, extend to it and say are we going to have enough for the holiday that's what we ha are focused on so I I was on NeoGAF and they were talking about you know this and they were basically saying that oh that's a uh, PR speak are oh, he just spinning anything everything he's not giving us exact details um, and of course he's not I mean that's his job I mean he's he's the PR master he's the spin master that's what he's so he's supposed to be doing uh, then we had other people saying oh now he just uh, saying that and, and all the scalpers are going to be raising the prices because he said that they're not going to be able that's not what he said. He said that are we going to have enough for the holiday? That's what we're focused on. So it means that they're actively trying to meet demand. He didn't say if they will or if they won't, but that they're working on it. So what do you think that says? So uh, I'll put it this way. Uh, I think Nintendo is, we talked about it last week, they're building the stock for the, for the holiday season, right? You're probably not going to see that many switches right now coming up. But you will see a lot of them in, you know, around October, November, December. I think you will see good enough supplies. Uh, what I'm interested in to see is how they're going to manage the supply of the Super NES Mini and the Switch together. But I think that's another discussion for another time. But I think they're going to they're gonna keep up. They're going to, they're going to, I think they're going to manage, Calionis. I think, again, they're saving enough switches for them. And I think it's starting to become more normal to see switches. The other day they became available in bestbuy.com. I saw the news. I went to Best Buy just to see if it's still open and, and able to buy it. And it was still able to buy it on, online. So, so I think it's, it's starting to be more normal. It's still not there yet, but I think they're going to be ready for the holidays. Yeah, and they have to because once Super Mario Odyssey releases, yeah, the other fuck face of, of hell, they're going to open and all the lava and the demons are going to come out <laughs> if people are not able to get a Switch. So the Nintendo is going to try to appease uh, those customers as much as possible. <laughs> go but, ahead, I, I, don't, I don't have a response <laughs> for that, but go ahead. <laughs> okay, but yeah, but moving over to the next one. And this one, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised that he actually did say, uh, he did talk about this and admitted to it. Uh, well, not really admit it because he was in question, but you know, he was he opened up about it, and we're talking about the CEO of Pokemon, uh, Sunekasa Ishihara. In and I quote, I told Nintendo that Switch wouldn't be success, wouldn't be a success before it went on sale because I thought that in the age of the smartphone, no one would carry a game console. It's obvious I was wrong. I came to realize that key to a successful game is quite simple: software with absolute quality leads to sales of hardware. Playing style can be flexible if the software is attractive enough. Currently, it's popular among the early adopters, but there needs to be one more step to attract a wider audience. Mm -hmm. I see more potential in Switch, but one shouldn't overestimate its potential. So uh, I see you know, he said two you know, separate things on there. So let's go ahead and focus on the first one, which is that he told Nintendo that Switch wasn't going to sell. So what do you say to that? Uh I mean, with mobile phones out there, a lot of people still think that you don't need a, a, a portable console. You don't, you know, in a sense. But I think what it's showing, and here's what the quote he said, which I always been saying this since the first episode of Get In and Get Out, so I'm gonna take some credit in here, is that you're selling to the hardcore gamer right now. You're selling to the gamer who wants to have triple A type of experiences on the go. You're not gonna get triple A experiences on your mobile phone. There's no way around that. Uh, can you get some? Yeah, you could. The problem is that developers are still not focused on that market. What I mean is the AAA developers. You're not going to see your Call of Duty on mobile phone. You're not going to see a LA Nor on your mobile phone, right? So this is where the hardcore gamer, gamer it's buying the Switch because of this. And I admit, too, that there's been some casual gamers who like the portability, who likes the... Again, the switching part of the of the system where you just connect, you play on your TV, and then you take it on the road. That is appealing. How many people right now are using their Switch traveling from uh, Florida to Georgia trying to escape Irma? I mean, I'm betting you a lot of people, uh, and, and a lot of people are happy to be playing that the Switch to get their minds away for, for what's coming. But uh, what he said is also key. 
needs to take it to the next step. And, and Cabrones, you know what I've been saying. The Nintendo needs to break to get to the 60, to the 80 million. They need to break that next ceiling and get the casual gamers on board, which is the gamers who are playing on mobile phones. So that's where it's going to be interesting is Nintendo sales are going to slow down at some point or they're going to get to the next phase. And that's what I'm interested in looking forward to see what happens to the market. Yeah, um, I'll say, you know, first and foremost, I mean, you know, be safe to everybody coming from Florida uh, and, you know, the uh, Caribbean and all the islands. So, I mean, hopefully all, all of you are going to be fine. Um, but, um, you know, talking about this specifically, I, it's, it, I mean, still, if you look at the Nintendo Switch right now and you look how it's selling, um, it indicates that it may or may not be a Wii type success yet. Uh, you know, but that's especially because you know where there's a shortage is on how many units they can produce. So we're not sure about that. But it seems to be uh, like uh, going side by side with the 3DS. Uh, the 3DS did end up selling more than 60 million uh, units, uh, and that seems like where the switch is headed. But it all depends on yeah on this holiday season. So we're we're, we're gonna I mean. The, we're not really going to know until we know how many units Nintendo can produce, and also we see how many people are trying to get the uh, the uh, the game or the system uh, through the holidays. So they need that push for us to have a better view of of the first year. So I would say uh, we're not really going to know until after the holidays, perhaps you know by February or March, uh, when that first fiscal year uh, ends, um, when that we're going to have a good indication for it. But as far as the uh, the Pokemon CEO, um. I guess uh, he's in his right, you know, to you know talk about that. Uh, his IP, which is Pokemon, it thrives on on portable devices, on handheld devices, and for Nintendo to go away from them and go with a hybrid, of course, he you know, he did have his concerns and about you know the longevity of his IP. But now I'm pretty sure he's really happy. And this takes me over to the second part of his comment that it's when he said that the system currently. It's popular among the early adopted, but there's there needs to be one more step to attract a wider audience. What do you think that one more step is that he was talking about? Again, casual. That's what I keep saying. Mm. The casual market. No, no. Pokemon on Switch. That's what he's talking about. Pokemon on Switch. He said that once Pokemon on Switch lands, it's going to be the nail in the coffin for every other system out there, he's and that's going to create the biggest so, uh, boom. Keep your uh, fanboyism a little bit lower there. Uh, no, he's just saying that the Switch just needs to break that glass ceiling. That's going to dictate, is it a $60 million seller or $60 million, $60 million console seller, or is it going to be into Wii territory, you know? And that's where we have to wait and see. Uh, Pokemon will help. I'm not denying that at all, Calionis. If you get a good Pokemon game on the Switch, that's one more step. But I think Mario Odyssey will help. I think... Nintendo continuous support of the system with good IP will help. I think third-party support, if still keeps coming, and at least, at least how it is right now, which is better than the Wii U, will help. Yeah, and yeah, and not not all the third-party support, just the right third-party support. So again, we'll see because you know a lot of people say, oh, on the PlayStation, right? It's it's a 60, 60 million consoles seller right now. Um, oh, a lot of people say, oh my God, PlayStation attach rate sucks. You know why it sucks? Because they're selling to the casuals. And the attach rate is because you have a different diversity of gamers buying the PlayStation. Not all gamer is going to buy you God of War. Not all gamers are going to buy you Horizon Zero Dawn. Not all gamers are going to buy you, uh, you know, because there's some more, some more options. The reason Nintendo has a great attach rate is because, admittedly, there's not like, wow, that many options, Calionis. It's still building that library, right? It's going to take a while, so the attach rate is going to look really good. And that's where Nintendo needs to head to, where the attach rate may a little bit suck, but it's because you have so many diversity that people are buying the Switch. I'm buying the Switch for FIFA, and then this guy comes over here, which is me. I'm buying the Switch for Xenoblade Chronicles, and the other guy comes and says, no, no, I'm buying the Switch for L.A. Noir. And that's where, what do you prefer? Do you prefer, if you were a, a, a third-party game, you prefer selling 1 million uh, units on a console that has sold like 10 in the market? And then your attach rate is great, or you prefer selling four million copies of that same 
software on a console that is 60 million in the market, right? That's what matters to the to the developer. They don't care about attach rates. They don't give a fuck about that. So Nintendo needs to build that diversity, and that's how you break that ceiling. Yeah, and I mean, just talking about uh, a little more extension on that one. Um, another reason why they buy the PS4 is because of of the Blu-ray or because of you know the HBO Go, Netflix, that's true. and that's true. and those. Yeah, so it's so it's not so it's not just games. Yeah. Uh, for the Switch right now, is only games, uh, so that's the only reason why you're getting it. Uh, then, you know, later on when they uh, add those things, um, perhaps other people are going to see it as, well, I'll, I can go ahead and get this, uh, you know, like tablet-looking uh, game console, and I can just have it for my kids to play games. But I'm going to use a, you know, first. And we said it here in this in this podcast. We said Nintendo's missing a great opportunity to turn their Switch into a tablet. And how a, t- a cheap tablet that a lot of people can use, but we'll see where they end up. Yeah, yeah, we'll see on that one. But um, now um, go ahead and yeah, we're going over to the next one, and this is the one yes. that we're going to be talking yeah, about today. Don't get confused, people. <laughs> if you want to stay and see what we think about VR, just wait on Onuma's Nintendo discussion right here on the Get In and Get Out Nintendo podcast. But go ahead, Calionis. Okay, and I'm just going to leave it at the quote, and then I'll quickly move on to the next one. But Reggie was questioned about VR and he had one thing to say about it. He said, the problem with VR is that there aren't a lot of experiences that are truly fun. And Dantes, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, cover that one in more, you know, more in depth about what we think uh, and if he's right or not uh, based on this. So um, anything you want to say before we move on? Nope. If you want to find out, just tune in later on the show. Go ahead, Calionis, to the next one. Okay, well, uh, going over to the next one, then uh, we have the uh, same person that leaked, uh, originally leaked the uh, LA North that was coming over to the Switch. Uh, it's saying that there might be an Nintendo Direct coming this week on, on September 13th. Um, we have, you know, Samus, uh, Metro Samus Returns uh, is coming out this week. Um, I'm not exactly sure if there is a Direct, if they're going to be, uh, be concentrating on Metroid, uh, since it's going to be too close, you know, to the release. Maybe they'll say you know like do a quick trailer or something but what else could they have on that direct uh well, first we have to see if the, the direct becomes a reality right but if 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 if, if, there is. if uh because nintendo what i hate about nintendo is they they announced this direct so late no promotion come on nintendo do a better job make it like at e3 say it in a month in advance we're having a, a, a direct this day and we're gonna turn it into a party baby so nintendo please come on do better on that You've done great on promotions, to clarify, on the Switch this gen, but that's the one part that I still think you could do better. Uh, I don't know. I, I expect at least one Direct on the fall, Caliones, to touch base on the holidays. So I do expect one big Direct. If this Direct becomes a reality, I don't think it's going to be that one. I don't think it's going to be a big Direct. I think it's going to be a small Direct. But they just had the Nindies just a couple of weeks ago. So I think this is not true. I don't think this is going to get so close. another Direct so close. But I do expect, Kalionis, at some point, closer to Mario Odyssey launch, that they're going to have a big direct showing all the software for this holiday. And that's where they're going to give me that Xenoblade Chronicles release date. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know you're, you've been dying for that one. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping that they just go ahead and say February of next year. But we'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, well, I'm moving along. And this one caused a stir on the internet, news outlets, newspapers, text messaging, social media, everywhere. And it's that the, the, Nintendo, I mean, the Mario profile, the Japanese profile has been updated and it says all around sporty, whether it's tennis or baseball, soccer or car racing, he, Mario, does everything cool. As a matter of fact, he also seems to have worked as a plumber a long time ago. So Mario is not a plumber anymore what do you say to that i mean you have to understand how many years did he uh he was a plumber in 1985 when mario bros came out 1984 what was it i don't remember anyway uh and then mario came to the mushroom kingdom and then and then and then uh saved the princess and after that he became a superhero so i think mario is not a plumber i think that's not surprising is they're not damage, damaging my uh, childhood because all the cartoons for Mario were that they were a plumber in the past. I think it's just Mario's just moved on. It's like uh, you're finding a new job. And I think his new job is saving the princess. So anyway, or uh, I guess you could say uh, security uh, security guard for the princess, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, kind of like uh, 
Yeah, Kevin Costner and Whitney Houston, yeah. the bodyguard. And I, I will always love but you. hopefully we will get more clarification when Super Mario Odyssey comes out. We may see him doing something else on the game. I don't know, but the, he has to be making money somehow. He's not married to the princess yet, so he's not a, a king. Come on, he's uh, getting paid on the side. I mean, who, who are the princess's uh, parents anyway? But never mind. We're just going to ignore yeah, that. Yeah, I it's, think it's going to move on, on uh, that one. <laughs> yeah, <but laughs> so we have... If... Uh, well, uh, this one is from uh, Suda51. They had a recently an interview with uh, video game Shoo Shoo, and where he was talking about um, you know Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes, and he said that if uh, Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes, which is not No More Heroes Three, he said if the game is successful, he definitely wants to make No More Heroes Three for the Nintendo Switch. People, just buy the game. That's all you gotta do. Just buy the game. You'll get No More Heroes Three. Anything else you want to say, Dante? No, I, I think this was interesting because I think we were taking as Travis strikes again as No More Heroes 3, but it looks like it is not No More Heroes 3. It's almost like a side story. So with that in mind, that may be interesting because I did not play No More Heroes 2. I played No More Heroes 1 on the Wii. So if I, as a person who haven't played No More Heroes 2, gives me a chance that maybe doesn't follow that story, I may be more inclined to buy it because I'm not... To clarify, I'm not a couple of uh, those Nintendo fans. I'm not. I mean, I'm excluding Caliones on this one. If he takes offense to it, but we'll see. Uh, what I'm saying with that is that I, I'm not gonna hype a game just because it, be, it it came to be a Nintendo exclusive, and I'm just gonna hype it. Oh my God, I've been waiting for it and never played the originals. I'm not gonna do that. If I'm a hype for a game, it's because I play. You know I'm hype for Xenoblade Chronicles because I love Xenoblade Chronicles. You know I'm hype on Mario Odyssey because I love Mario games, right? I'm not going to be that type of person. I did not go ahead and hype Bayonetta 2 because it, it became a Nintendo exclusive like some people did, even though they never played Bayonetta 1. So I'm not that way. So, But but if at least this gives you a chance to, if you're interested in the game, look, look information for it and say, if, the, if it's a side story that doesn't have to, anything to do with the main storyline, it gives a chance to new people to buy the IP and start maybe going back and go back and play No More Heroes 1 and No More Heroes 2 and then be pumped and then maybe we get No More Heroes 3. So. Oh, uh, moving on with you know, Travis. So this is uh, still uh, Suda51 talking about Travis and the possibilities of maybe seeing him uh, in a different kind of game. But uh, he, was yeah, uh, he was talking about how uh, they changed, you know, a little bit of the gameplay, how you use, you know, Travis, and how they moved on from having the, uh, you know, the, the two you know, controllers to to be able to play with them, and moving over to a single controller. And the reason why they want to do that is because, and I quote, also, there's another reason he decided to make Travis uh, as tries again playable on the on one controller. It would really raise the possibility of getting an invitation to put Travis in Smash Bros. I think maybe this time it might work out. Um, you know, before I was saying, you know, uh, you know a character like Travis, uh, much, you know, really mature games, and it might not be possible you know, to have it on the system. But with Bayonetta 2 being there, uh, I think it's, it's very, very possible that uh, they can include him on there, especially if Nintendo perhaps is the, the publisher of the No More Hero games and they want to promote the character. Um, you know, that way, that would be great promotion. The only thing I don't think they would include on the game is him charging his sword that that might not work out yeah that probably not work out but they did uh how you call it pg bayonetta and smash so they could probably pg uh travis in uh in, in smash too i don't think it's a big deal i mean snake is a mature game he was in smash you mentioned bayonetta i mean even though he's i don't think it's a mature game but cloud is there so you know and and and, and sword characters are pretty popular in smash like i love using sword characters like i love Using a uh, choke, of course, but you know why? Why I pick choke? But, uh, but I like sword characters. So again, I think Travis could work in in Smash. Yeah, and well, uh, we're gonna continue over the news. This is one of those yes, but type of news. So first one, Capcom did announce that Resident Evil Revelations One and Two are coming to the Nintendo Switch on November 30th. So that's another third-party game that is coming out in November. So now you have Skyrim. You have Eleanor, and you have Resident Evil Revelations 1 and 2. So it's 
it gives you an idea of why Nintendo really is keeping that month open wait, uh, without wait, wait. any That's Nintendo November 30 in Japan, my friend. So it's it oh. hasn't been announced to the West. So hopefully we'll get well, a, we'll get an announcement pretty soon. At some point in the holidays, you'll get it. But yeah, go ahead. Well, I mean, you well, hopefully you would expect because they have you know they, usually they're trying to do worldwide releases yep. unless they're not releasing a game. So hopefully that'll be the case. Yep. Uh, but uh, now we go to the other part of this news, and the other part is that we're seeing Evil Revelations two. It's 26 gigabytes of uh, requires 26 gigabytes of memory, which basically makes you forced to have an SD card to be able to play the game. So, what do you say to that? So, <laughs> so let's see. Uh, hopefully, I understood the news correctly, Kalina. So, are you saying if you buy physical, you're still gonna need 12 gig gigabytes and 26 gigabytes of space, even if you buy a physical? Okay, okay no. Uh, so this this is. Um, this is how the, the breakdown does. Okay, so let's say you go fully digital. Uh, the first game is going to be 13 gigabytes. The second one is going to be 26 gigs. So, I mean, 39 gigs. Uh, you have uh, an onboard memory of roughly like 25 point something, like 25.2, something like that. After the OS and everything else, it's uh, taken into consideration. So, yes, you're forced to have an SD card. But if you buy it physical... Uh, is going to be the Resident, you know, Resident Evil Revelations collection is going to be thirty nine ninety nine. The first game is physical. The second one is digital. And how much is the so second one digital? How big? Twenty six gigs, which is more than the twenty five point two. And you know why they did uh, that is they don't want to manufacture the thirty two gig card because it's more expensive to manufacture, and that's what's happening with LA Noir mm -hmm. is. And NBA 2K18 as yeah, well. Yeah, it's if they if well, but NBA 2K did not do the 32 gigabytes uh, memory card. They to keep the cost down and be the same. That's why they're saying that the SD card is required. Is because they pick I think yes. the 20 something uh, card, whatever. The 32. Well, uh, you have the the 8, uh, 16, 32s. So okay, so they pick the 16. Uh, so the 16. So they pick the 16, and they're saying, look. If we if you want if you don't want us to charge you ten dollars more like LA North to give you an example is doing. Then you're gonna have to download the rest of the game in the uh, in the in the Switch. So in the in Revelations looks like the same. Is okay? You buy it uh, physical, but then you're not getting two cartridges because they want to keep the cost down. And 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 then you have to download the other one. Honestly, Calionis, in a sense, I understand why Nintendo pick cartridges because it's for the um, convenience of a of a mobile console. You need to be cartridge. You don't want to have a CD or like UMD. Remember those? Or something to that extent. Uh, because then you can have uh, skipping and scratching as you move. Uh, the problem with that, the cartridges, though, now is that if you're trying to put AAA games on the go, the games are too big for cartridges or cartridges are just too expensive to manufacture. And then you're going to get the, extra, the Switch version being more expensive. So as a Switch owner, you're going to have to be ready for that. Or do you prefer what NBA 2K did and keep the cost down? They put the 16 gigabyte car and but then you have to download the rest of the game uh on the switch so then that means you need to buy a hefty sd car so now that's 64 gigabyte sd car or 32 uh, uh, gigabyte sd car is not worth it you need honestly you need to buy 200 or more if this is if this is <laughs> is this is becoming the norm and then a 200 gigabyte car is again it's like 60 to 70 dollars so you are putting a lot of a lot of weight in the consumer Calione. so in a sense it is hurting I don't know. I don't know how that's gonna turn out. I at least they're not uh, uh, like the Vita uh, memory cards. Thank God. But still, yeah. but still, it, it is putting a lot of force. If, if games like this are gonna keep continuing, which is something we didn't have that data last week when we talk about this, uh, is that it's really now. I, I'm really seeing it on the consumer side why some consumers are pissed because it's really putting a lot of a lot of weight in them buying a good car and they're expensive if you go higher. So we'll see what happens, Calionis. But this is getting out of now, getting out of hand now. But yeah. again, you want cheaper or you want to buy a new SD card? We'll see what happens. Well, I mean, I'll say like if you really want to complain about something, go complain to Microsoft and Sony because you already have the 20, 30, 40, 50 gigs on the Blu-ray disc, and they make you download all of it into your uh, hard drive. So I mean, that's if you want to complain about something, complain about that. Uh, I would say that. If it's something about you know keeping the, the cost down of the cartridge and not making us pay ten dollars more over the other one, then I, I'm I'm all for it. Uh, you already know that you know for smartphones, um, you you get a memory card. For portable devices, 
you get a memory card for the Nintendo Switch, you knew that at some point you were going to get a memory card. And that's the reason why when I got the system and I got Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild as a cartridge, not a download, as a cartridge, the next thing I got was a 200 gigabyte cartridge from Amazon, uh, well, a micro SD card from Amazon, because I knew that I was going to need it. Uh, I jumped on you know, one of the sales, so you know, uh, I wouldn't have to pay too much. Uh, but I'm okay with the companies doing that. And I'm just glad that they're not uh, necessarily doing the full game uh, to some extent on this one. The 26 gigs, yes, uh, is the full game. But if you do the same on Xbox or PS4, you're going to have the 26 gigs on the disc. But you know what? All of it is going to go into the hard drive anyways. So um, I, I don't complain about that. So I have a different perspective, though. You have to remember, and I know it's, it's Nintendo couldn't do that, but... The Microsoft and and Sony's consoles do come with 500 to one terabyte of 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 of, of, of space. You have ample space. Now mm. I don't know them installing the system entire or the game entirely on 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 the system. I agree with you. That was stupid from the start. I don't think they should have been doing that. But I think to maintain the speeds of games become bigger and data becomes bigger, is it's it's tough. It's tough. Uh, the only thing is that I hate the complaint or, or the comparison about the Switch being a, a, a mobile phone. You don't spend that much data. You're not buying that huge of games on on the Switch. So, again, I'm trying to see the consumer side. I, I said on the previous show, I understand why Nintendo put less memory. Flash memory is, is not cheap. And and they try to keep the cost down. But, again, now now things are getting a little bit out of hand for the consumer. I'm just saying for the consumer. You have to, we, remember, we can't always defend these companies, Calionis. I know what you mean. And I, in, in as an extent, I agree. It's just that now it's really hurting, you know, the future. I mean, again, I don't think you can get away with a with a sixty four gigabyte car. I said last week, oh, they're yep. cheap. It shouldn't be a big deal. But now with this news and stuff like that, it's just getting worse and worse. How much is too much? Then you're gonna have to buy more memory, more SD cards. In at some point, and even a two hundred yeah, gig um, is not gonna be enough. So now you're talking that you're putting. So your switch now is three hundred dollars. You buy a two hundred gigabyte card. It's seventy dollars. It's three hundred, three hundred and seventy. Then you have to buy another one at some point. Now you're talking that you invested one hundred and forty dollars on just memory on 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 the switch. It you know you don't see what my point. It's a little bit tough for a consumer, Calionis. I don't know. Yeah, but um, but it's it's the same complaint. Uh, like I said, it's the same complaint as Microsoft and Sony. Um, I mean, I know you said um, if they come with five hundred gigabytes of memory, one uh, terabyte of memory, but also you have games like Quantum Break which is like over 100 gigabytes of a single game. Then you have uh, Gears of War 4, where after the, the multiplayer map updates and everything is over 100 gigabytes uh, worth of memory. So the Nintendo games, um, uh, I think feel from the first party one, Zelda was the one that was the biggest, and it was 13 gigs. Uh, you had Splatoon, which is like 4 gigs. Mario Kart uh, 8 Deluxe, which is around you know, 4 gigs. Um, I think ARMS was something in between 2 and 3 gigs, so they know how to make games you know, smaller, how to compress them, and that's something that on the other, uh, I mean, on the other consoles you don't see. So yes, uh, 32 gigs is a, is a whole lot less than 500 uh, gigabytes, but at the same time, the games don't take nearly enough as much space as, as those. So it's not uh, really just a complaint for Nintendo, it's a complaint overall for all the gaming companies, all you know, the the industry. Yeah, I don't home. expect the first party games are gonna be compressed properly. I don't, exp I don't see an issue with that. I don't have an issue with Nintendo games, and we'll see when Odyssey comes out. But I do foresee an issue again with third party games. But again, we'll see. I'm just trying to give you a perspective from the consumer side, Calionis. It, it it is tough. I don't think there's a winner in this one, uh, on on this issue. I'm just I'm just saying that I now I understand even more. Why consumers are complaining about this? I think, I, and they deserve to complain. I know you said, "Why you complain?" No, they deserve to complain, dude. You sometimes you have to you make these companies better. You have to yeah. complain. Yeah, I mean, I'm okay with people complaining. Is that they they shouldn't just complain about Nintendo. Uh, they should be complaining about Sony and Microsoft as well. Uh, so not just Nintendo. It's uh, overall uh, the whole gaming industry, and I mean, not not just the gaming industry. Also, um, you know, tablets and smartphones and and all of those. So. It's, it's you know, like you said at the beginning memory is really expensive and some companies they're doing you know like taking certain uh, alternative or liberties uh, to try to allocate that um, that price and, and that amount and, and those expenses uh, somewhere else 
but yes, it's um, it's the industry as a whole. Well, we'll leave it here because this is almost turning into a a topic of the show this week. But uh, I think we I think we're gonna have more examples and we can keep continue discussing it. But go ahead, Kali, let's yeah. do the next one. Okay, well, uh, moving over to the second one or, or the next one, uh, we have um, Jordan Amaro, which is you know one of the developers uh, who who works at Nintendo, and he is a uh, Western developer. Uh, he was talking about. Uh, you know, Splatoon 2 and why Salmon Run mode isn't available uh, for play. So uh, he, the way that he was explaining it is that you know you gotta first you gotta think about Nintendo as a uh, Japanese company, which they are, and about how they I mean they they do their games, their modes, and everything. And it's with the thinking that uh, we don't let you just you know choose anything you want. We want to give you something that you don't know you want it. Uh, and I quote. Um, in Japan, everything is tailored. You probably heard you know, Sheena Ayagar's TED talk in which she went to a restaurant in Japan and tried to order sugar in her green tea. The people at the cafe said, one does not put sugar in green tea, and then we don't have sugar. So yeah, they denied her the sugar. But then when she ordered coffee instead, it did come with sugar. So in Japan, there's a sense of we're making this thing for you, and this is how we think this thing is better enjoyed. So Nintendo, they're, you know, they're the same way. They create the different modes, they create the certain you know, different things, and they tailor it with their own thinking of how you uh, would be enjoying the game. Uh, so, yes, uh, you may experience certain freedoms like on Breath of the Wild where you, you can do pretty much anything you want, but uh, as a Japanese-centric company, there are certain things that they do uh, to keep it in a way on their vision, and that's how, you know, how their vision is. So, uh, do you want to elaborate on this, Dantes? Well, it's Platoon. You know how I feel about Platoon, so I'm not going to touch too base on it. But, but, but I mean, not, but just, uh, not just as Platoon and Salmon Run. It was more so how... I know, uh, the I know, Japanese I know. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's... I Honestly, I don't... I'm... Whatever, in the sense that when you buy a game, the developer has a vision for the game, and you have to accept what the game is, and it's your choice as a consumer is the game is for me or not, right? So in this case, Nintendo decided to make Salmon Run just be available in certain times is their choice as a developer and you as a consumer decide if you want to buy Splatoon 2 or not so I don't see a big deal you you this always even if you're a USA company and if you're a developer a western company when you make a game you make it what you think is the best for the game and then the consumer decides so okay so um what we previously heard about you know FIFA about uh, you know, their version for the Nintendo Switch. We've had you know, screenshots, we've had gameplay, uh, and everybody, even though it's not the PS4, Xbox One version, but the game looks you know, pretty good. Um, Nintendo, I mean, uh, EA, uh, they were talking, um, and they did say that, I think we're going to see more FIFA on the Nintendo Switch, and elsewhere in the interview, he did say that uh, the best portable FIFA we've ever done is the Nintendo Switch version of the game. So. Um, are you surprised that they would say that we can expect to see more FIFA games on it? No, again, if it, if it sells, I think you're going to see more. Maybe we'll see a Madden, a portable Madden, I think could be fun. But, I mean, we'll wait and see. EA with Nintendo, they have a straight relationship, if, 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 I guess you could put it that way. So we'll see if, if EA keeps selling. EA is going to put it where the money is. If there's money in, in the Switch, they're going to put it in the next FIFA, so... Well, um, I guess um, you know, going over to the next one is uh, we have you know, Rising Star Games in partnership with Bitman Bureau. Uh, they announced that 88 Heroes uh, will be releasing on the Nintendo Switch this October, on early in October. Uh, they're going to have a complete version of the game uh, called 98 Heroes Edition. Uh, so the game is going to feature uh, the DLC packs of RSG Champions, uh, which was pretty available in other formats, and they're going to have the new uh, downloadable pack uh, HA mode activate. So, yep, uh, just uh, another game that has been announced for the Switch uh, and coming over earlier October. Okay. Damn. <laughs> that was a big show. A lot of news. I know it, it felt like the week nothing major happened, but not when I was looking for the news, Caliones, I was like, okay, this one is, is, is good to talk about. This one's good to talk about. This one's good to talk about. I'm like, damn. I, <laughs> Nintendo's having a lot of news. Let's just put it that way. But but we're done. People, we're done. We're <laughs> done with Reggie's News Center. But now, Caliones, if I wanted to know what games I'm excited for that are coming to the Nintendo eShop, what is our favorite store? Kikaro's Mini Market. And we have 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight games uh, coming out this week after the big release of Memorial and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. So uh, we have RBI Baseball 17. Uh, we have Lego Worlds, uh, The Bridge, Physical Contact 2048, Neuro Voider, uh, Light Speed, uh, Double Speed Edition, Double Dragon 4, and Neo Geo's Blues Journey. Uh, so out of those, um, and I'll base this one because I'm, I mean, it's, it's going to be RBI Baseball. <laughs> no, it's not going to be RBI Baseball. But um, I think you know, the, the one that received the not for me personally because of the, my kids is uh, Lego Worlds. Uh, so Lego Worlds is going to be incorporating a new two-player mode. Uh, so that's going to be something that will be available on the game. Uh, but uh, that's, um, you know, for me personally, my game of the week. So you think uh, RBI Baseball is going to compete with Major League, the show for Sony? <laughs> Uh, well, it's uh, thirty dollars less. It should have been fifty dollars less. Uh, if they make it a nine ninety nine game, then yeah, it, it'll be worth it. But um, it's it's not there. <laughs> I know. I'm joking. I'm joking. I mean, uh, I, I still I'm, I, again. I'm I'm just so surprised why how Sony can have its own Major League Baseball game being exclusive to one console. I mean, I know baseball is not as popular, but I I think b baseball deserves to be more consoles. Like have a pre premiere, like a Major League. 2K, you know, 18 or 19 to compete with the show. I, I think, I think I'm just surprised how a console has the not the rights, but have the only good major baseball game on the market. And that, I don't think that's fair. And you, Calionis, used used to be a huge baseball fan, so I know that it's it's kind of sucky for you. You not do not own a PlayStation at this time, and then not having many options for a good major, a major league baseball game. Yeah, I mean, if, if you can't play the game that you want to on your system, then uh, you, you can just go out to the park and play baseball. <laughs> and I encourage that people go outside your houses and, and exercise. <laughs> yeah, you should, you uh, should be taking your own advice. hey -o! Anyway! <laughs> but that's it. No, that's it. That's it. I'm not, I'm not going to take any more shots on Cali. No, no, I'm, I'm saying, like, no, no, we're done with it now. <laughs> and so we can go ahead and, and duke it out on, on the next topic. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you, Caliones. Thank you for that. I think we're ready to move on to Onuma's Nintendo discussion. So what is Onuma's Nintendo discussion? This is where me and Caliones go one on one and discuss the biggest topic of the week or the most interesting topic of the week. And that's why this week we picked up uh, what Reggie said about VR. So, Caliones, like always, can you repeat the quote? And or if you if you still have it in front of you, sorry. <laughs> and if 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 not, if you want to start first, how you feel about VR? Do you think Reggie's right on his statement? Well, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and let you go first. But to remind people, we're talking about you know Reggie, uh, his interview, and talking about you know the VR, you know PlayStation VR, uh, well just on uh, virtual, uh, virtual reality as a whole, and him stating that. Nintendo is looking into it, but they're not currently doing anything because it's it's just not not fun. Uh, there haven't been fun experiences, and uh, that's why they haven't jumped into it yet. So go ahead and get it started, then. No, 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 Calionis. No, no, no. I said you go first. So okay. you're going first. So <laughs> I'll 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 put it this way. Nintendo would be doing VR right now if. PlayStation and the PSVR had come up with anything fun, but since they have, and then most of the things they've done on VR pretty much sucks, uh, then that's why Nintendo is not going into it. Uh, and I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm being a little harsh. They are, of course, you know, some uh, fun experiences. But the thing is, it's, it's just, um, I mean, the, the technology is starting to be there. Um, you have, you know, the, uh, the HTC Vive, the Oculus Rift. Um, you have you know, even the Samsung, um, you know, VR headsets. Uh, so you, there, there are fun experiences to be had, but um, it's, I think it's in, in one side, and before you say this, I'll, I'll say it for, you know, first, uh, maybe they're having Virtual Boy nightmares, um, and they're still waiting for a company out there to show everybody how it should be done uh, for them to go ahead and uh, to understand it better and be able to you know, be on board fully. Um, so you're saying that Nintendo so, copies other companies too? No, I'm saying that <laughs> a lot of companies are struggling with VR and have been struggling for the past year. It's okay, that they're just I'm being messing, smart I'm about messing, it. I'm messing, just... I'm messing, I'm messing, I'm <laughs> messing. All companies so, copy each other. It, you, you, just, you have a harder time admitting that the Nintendo sometimes do, does copy some stuff. But I'm just giving you shit. 
It's all good. It's all good, Kalianis. It's all good. Do you want me to say what I feel, what Reggie said? Well, uh, yes. Uh, go ahead and, and tell me what you think, and I'll tell you if, if you're right or wrong. Oh, right. sure, sure, sure. Let, let me start with the first part. Uh, have you played VR? Me? Yes. Okay. Which system do you use to play VR? Uh, I haven't played it with any of the uh, current system. I Well, okay, let's put it this way. I've experienced VR. I've had, um, like, picked it up here, played it for uh, like 10, 15, 20 minutes, but that's something that I, I've i had in my house and played for four hours on end. So, I've, I mean, I've done, you know, like the Mech Warriors. Um, I've done... Uh, I mean, well, just you know, even you know, virtual, uh, you know, uh, you know, baseball, uh, Star Wars, you know, you know, things like that. But mostly, uh, what is limited to the uh, the arcades, uh, but nothing, uh, nothing really in house. I uh, also the done, arcades. So, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Or, or and, and even you know, going over to the Microsoft Store and just uh, experiencing their VR on there. But it's uh, one of those where you're standing, you're like, grab this, move it here. Okay. And so, so you know, it's it's not, it's, it's still a little. It feels a little robotic. It's not uh, fluid, and it's not. It's fun at first because it's a new experience, but it's not really a lasting experience. Uh, and once you are done with it, it's not really something that you go back and, and continue playing. So that that's my, my experience. Okay. With it. Okay. Now it's my turn. Oh, it's my turn, Kaliones. I'm gonna have fun with this one. So I do have VR. I have the PlayStation VR. So I can really say. How bad okay. VR is, right? Yes. Okay. Second, I gave credit to other, the other week to Nintendo for being the less of the spinners. You know, I think so, Sony and Microsoft sometimes can duke it out who has more bullshit. But Reggie sometimes has a lot of bullshit. Let me clarify. Reggie sometimes can drop some shits that are like, hmm, hmm. And to me, this spin is just telling me is that, oh, Nintendo doesn't have any investor interest in it right now. We're just giving you an excuse why we don't want to do it because we're Nintendo. <laughs> and hear what I mean with that. Uh, and I wish you could watch me with all my impressions right now. But anyway, uh, and here's, here's what I mean <laughs> with that. Is that Nintendo is basically saying, yeah, exactly, exactly. Nintendo is basically saying, well, we're, again, we're not interested. Who cares? Maybe, you, like you said, maybe they're having nightmares with the virtual boy. Um, but basically, uh, the spin is, in a sense, it's kind of like what they did when they said, we don't need HD on the Wii. Oh, we don't need HD. There's not enough TVs for the HD. So PlayStation and, 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 and Microsoft are just wasting their time with HD. Ha, 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 let's spin that. Ha, ha, ha. Even though Microsoft and Sony knew that HD was the future. And more so, and you have to give credit. I know you say, oh, Sony doesn't innovate. Sony knew from the start with the PlayStation 3. That thing cost a lot of money, but it had a lot of tech that was ahead of its time compared to any console because even Microsoft, the first Xbox, did not, did not have HDMI. So that's how Sony knew that HD was the future. And you know what sucks? It hurts the Wii. It hurts the system. That's why I use the Dolphin because it turns games way look way better. I cannot watch games in... In standard this, definition anymore. We're, we're talking about VR. Here. Wait, 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 wait. Like no, DVN, no, 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 no. So, give me, so go give back me, into give me VR. A spiel. Okay, let me finish my spill. I'm just setting the ground how, how companies spin this shit, Caliones. I know it's hurting you right now, but this is how you spin the shit. Like, hey, like Sony spin the shit saying, hey, if you want a, a $600 console, you better get two jobs. Isn't it that pure, pure bullshit? Saying that straight to your consumer, Caliones, right? You're still not talking about VR. Okay. Oh, wait. So I'm done. I'm done with my with, with my with my uh, rant on companies spinning the shit. Right now, what Reggie said specifically is VR fun. I think VR is fun. I think the problem with VR is that it has just been doing experiences. Right. It hasn't come a full game, but but there's hope. Resident Evil Seven can be fully played on VR. And the people who have played Resident Evil 7 in VR said, has stated that it's a fucking fun experience, right? It is scary as hell. I played the demo of Resident Evil in VR, and I can tell you, it is scary. I was like, oh, shit, this as a full-on game, this is fun. So I don't think it's the VR the problem. I think the developers have not made great experiences yet with the tech, right? And you can't. I, I have Batman on VR. Yeah, 
fun experience. It's like a two-hour experience. It was fun. It was fun playing as Batman. The scenarios was fun. It just needed to be developed a little bit more, right? I did play Job Simulator on VR. Hey, another fun. That's a funny game. But how you play the game, how you pick stuff, how you put it, really fun. Even my son platted that game because he enjoyed playing the VR on that game. A kid is the first, the best barometer to tell you that, that something is fun. And again, it is about the developers. The Star Wars experience that came out, a lot of people have said that it's a great experience on VR, right? I play VR Worlds, and even though it's a bunch of mini games, not all of them are good, there's some experiences in there that is really fun. You should have seen my mom when she came to visit and I put the VR on her on her and did the shark cage, how she was screaming, scare. So again, that shows you the VR is fun. It is fun. So it is not the Vive's fault. It is not Sony's fault. It is not the other one's fault, Samsung, whatever. It is because developers has not harnessed this new technology because they're still learning about it. You always have to be the first to do it. And again, you give shit to Sony. At least they had the balls to be one of the first ones that they tried the VR. Now, what sucks about Sony is that they're really bad at supporting peripherals. So that's what scares me about Sony, right? But they did try. And then there's some fun experiences there. And many more experiences are coming. Until Dawn, one of the best PlayStation exclusives on the PlayStation 4. Scary game. They're making the prequel, Caliones, on VR. And it's going to be scary as fuck, right? And if you saw, remember E3, they show a lot of good full games are going to be on VR. I haven't played Robinson The Journey. A lot of people tell me it's a good game, good VR experience. I have it. I'm, I'm hoping to play it at some point this year before the year ends. Another good VR. And I have a couple of plats on VR. So I can state, Caliones, VR is fun. But, but, to Reggie's, uh, you know, give him a point to Reggie. I think the point is that software has not been there to make it as fun as maybe, uh, uh, maybe make it more casual or make it more mainstream. That is the problem. It's still a hardcore peripheral. Okay. So let me go ahead and cut you there. Uh, so you've said all these things and you've been talking about all this. Uh, and, uh, Reggie, to remind you, he said the problem with VR is that there aren't a lot of experiences that are truly fun. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Or are there really a lot of experiences that are truly fun? There are more experiences that are truly fun. It's just that Reggie basically just shed on the good ones. Basically, he stated, well, there's nothing to it. There's nothing. No, he didn't say nothing. He said that there are not a lot of experiences. So he said there are some. But right now, it's still, it's, um, it's, I mean, I heard to use a word uh, because it's a lot, uh, a word that they use negatively with Nintendo. But it's still like a sort of gimmick. Um, it's not fully Are you really calling gimmick yet. to something that Nintendo does all the time, really, Calionis? Um, Yes, but the, <laughs> the reason why I'm saying it is because VR is not fully developed yet. And I, I don't think we're going to see it fully developed with the PlayStation VR. I think it's going to be the next uh, console. The, the headset is fine. The controllers are fine. Uh, camera are fine. But I think the, uh, the, 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 the system itself, the power is, is still not there to give you the full immersive experience that requires you to have, you know, truly, you know, to have true fun with the system. So, uh, or with, with VR. Um, also, another thing is, why would Nintendo say uh, that, you know, yes, we're going to be supporting it? Because right now, the system that they just released this year is going to be the, is the Nintendo Switch. That's going to be the system that they're going to have for the next four or five years. Um, and the system is not really built to be able to handle uh, those VR experiences. I have been, um, I mean, on record before saying that the Virtual Boy, Virtual Boy games, they are not taxing. They're pretty simple. And that's something that they can easily uh, do on, on the Nintendo Switch. All you need is a headset, put the... Uh, this switch, uh, slide it in, and you can play with the Joy Cons, and and you already have the Virtual Boy games there. Um, it's I think it's like a total of 32 or 36 games uh, that they released now during its its life. But that's something that they can go ahead and, and, and bring out and, and do it as a test. And I think it's something that can indicate uh, to Nintendo from I mean first-hand experience and from their own uh, you know, install base, if people do consider that fun or if there are uh, other things that are missing. So uh, what Reggie really is saying is that, yes, uh, there are some games and some experiences that are fun, 
but there's not really that many out there. It's just a few. Um, no, 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 no. What Reggie's saying basically is, um, let me give you an excuse why we're not doing it. I would have more respect. He just came out and says, our switch is what we're working on. That's our future. Maybe at some other point, we evaluate that technology. Just saying, oh, there's not enough experiences because Nintendo should be the master of experiences. They're the ones who made Wii Sports. They should be able to bring well, VR and create the best experience, Calionis, the best experience of all time in VR. I mean, but there, there is uh, something out there. I believe uh, it's a uh, collaboration in between Nintendo and I think I believe it's Namco, but don't quote me on that one. Uh, that they're doing the Mario Kart VR, and I you, I did send you the video yeah. a couple of uh, months ago, yeah. and that really sound. I mean, it looks really fun. You're able to drive the vehicle, uh, grab the items, uh, you know, like launch them at, at your. Were you enemies, excited about that? Riders. You sent me the video. You were like, oh, jiggly, 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 jiggly. Yes. Uh, I was excited about it, but um, it's because uh, this experience is more limited. You don't have to worry about movement. The, the movement that you do is just this stick and well, the button to, uh, Calionis, to boost it's yourself. The same with the VR. But, no, it's not the same with the VR because with the VR, let's say no, no, if you're no, no, doing. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Uh, you don't have to move with VR on car games. They're being car games like Gran Turismo. The, 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 the yeah. experience that they're showing is standing yes. still and just moving. But car games. But car games are not the only ones made for you know VR. There's other games that they require you to move, and most of the movement is you click and point on on the ground, and then the camera moves there. Then you click and it moves. So you're you're still limited. It's 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 frustrating because you have all this freedom when it comes to you know for example like you know first uh, first person games, uh, the the Call of Duties and the uh, Battlefield, the Battlefronts, and all those. So you have full movement of your character, uh, forward, backwards, side to side, up and down. But with VR, yes, uh, you can move the camera, but when it comes to the movement, uh, they still haven't done it in a in a way that it's not gonna make the people uh, get nauseated and get dizzy and vomit. So that's something that they're still working on, uh, and that's something that they need to fix. No, I, to clarify, I agree that there's some limitations with VR. I agree that there should be more software. I like I said, I even stated that I agree with what Reggie stated that there's some you know, uh, 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 there's not enough great experiences, but they're there. It's The question is, if it's fun. There is enough there to be fun, to make it fun, Calionis. It is in there. Yeah, That's what I was challenging. Wait, wait let me finish, let have, me finish. But do they have any, do they have lasting appeal? No, 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 wait, let me finish. That's what I was challenging Reggie on, is that he was spinning this because Nintendo doesn't care about VR at this point, which is fine. Again, that's why I brought the example HD, how they spin HD with the Wii. They didn't care because the Wii was so successful that who gives a fuck about HD at that point? And it came back and bite him in the ass. It did come back. You have to admit, even though the Switch, or excuse me, the Wii was successful, it well, came back. Wait, wait, I'll let say, me finish. Let me finish. I'll let you finish. I'll say you're completely correct on that one, but just because they did it once or said it once doesn't mean that it's the same thing with the same context. No, um, I'm just saying that maybe, all companies like to spin, Calionis. They like yeah, to spin the they, shit. And we already called Reggie the, the spin master, and that's what he does. But, I mean, there's actually truth to what he's saying. I mean, it's, it, I know that you've experienced certain things. Some of them have been good, others have been bad, but there hasn't really been that one killer application, killer game, or killer experience that makes the uh, the medium uh, blow up and, and go mainstream. It's still, it's, it's still small. Yeah, you need um, a Wii Sports. And I agree with the, that. You need a Wii Sports yeah, this, yeah. that show so, what the uh, motion control could do that made it mainstream. So that's, so that's why, I mean, on that portion, I do agree with you. It's, um, there's, um, I, I still say the, the technology still needs to be developed somehow because I want to be, I want to see the, our steps be, being tracked. I want to see our movement, us walking to that being tracked on the game as well. But I want to, I want us not to like slam into a wall. Uh, so that's where you have the, the shortcomings when it comes to it. But um, I'll give you this. The only thing uh, that I have against Nintendo not trying VR right now is that they could very well be the ones that show everybody else how VR should be done. And you brought a really good point. Wii Sports, with Wii Sports, it was something simple, something easy to understand, and it blew up and made uh, the Wii a uh, system that sold over 100 million uh, consoles. So I would like to see a Nintendo's version of what they think VR should be, but th with the Switch, uh, you're not going to be able to see it yet. That's it, We're going to have to wait. I think what we can do to close this, I think I, I agree in a sense 
I agree the VR is not there yet, but I don't agree with Reggie that it's, there's not enough there. It's fun. It, I think it's fun. I think it just needs to expand. I think I just I just call it Nintendo a little bit, Carlos. And here's here's what I'm saying. There's already a lot of people uh, being negative with VR, saying it sucks, blah 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 blah. And you know maybe they have the merit. The problem is that's not going to move the technology forward. We as gamers are a little bit close-minded to new experiences, right? And even the Wii mode, which I defended, and you know I defended it, Calionis, because Resident Evil 4 is fucking great on the with the with the Wii control, right? Uh, and, and and a lot of people, because gamers want to play games, they just want to sit on the couch and take the control and don't do anything else. And with that mentality, we're not moving forward. And Reggie, with those comments, are hurting a little bit because I want to see developers take more chances. I think it, it is expanding. I think Resident Evil 7 is a perfect example. Of, of, of something that could become great on the VR. But I agree, and I am saying it, we need a Wii Sports type of game that takes the, the medium to the next level. So what I'm challenging Nintendo is, you know, maybe just say we're not there yet, we're not ready, but don't don't shit on it yet. Let's give it time. Let's give it see that it, it can expand. Let's hopefully it can be better. Hopefully we can we can have some other ways to play gaming and not just sitting on the couch. Like I said, I like Skyward Sword, I, how he plays. I like it. a lot of people. Oh man, this sucks because people were like just like spinning that shit like they thought it was like a fucking Star Wars game. And and, and Skyward Sword, what I like with the boss battles, it was it was really strategic. How you swing the game, how you swing the controller to attack certain points in that fight. I love Skyward Sword, and a lot of people hate it. I don't get it because again, they're biased. The gamers have to play games just sitting on their ass with a controller. Expand people. Let's play differently. Let's play VR. Let's play motion controls. The Switch, it's great. I like the Switch. And one of the things I gave the Switch for is the many ways you can play the system. You can play it portable. You can uh, disconnect the controllers. You can, you know, uh, uh, play. If you want regular play, you can buy the Pro Controller and play it normally. A lot of options. That's what I want to see, Calion. So. <laughs> well, thanks, and uh, I'll go ahead and leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, since we're done, Calionis. We're done fighting. We're stopped. We're bad being buddies. We're bad being friends. Uh, we're going to end this show. And uh, I'll start with what I always like to end it with. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us on the Get In and Get Out Nintendo podcast every Monday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Please remember to subscribe, like, and comment so you can make these two crazy motherfuckers happy. Also, remember, go to our description box. You will see the full schedule of our channel. We have content like Streaming Wednesdays, like Gameplay Thursdays, like Forcing Unison Live. Please go out down there, read them, and then come and watch our content. Also, remember, if you want to see this podcast and you don't want to see our ugly faces, go to iTunes and SoundCloud and download this podcast for free. Rate us over there so you can show us some love. Also, we have a small Facebook page called the Get In and Get Out Nintendo Podcast. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Forcing units and gaming. I did that last time, too. Twice I have named the podcast instead of the Facebook page. Uh, you, 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 you can't stop thinking about Nintendo, but go no, ahead. No, of course. I, I mean, I dream of Mario every night. Right now, right now, I'm dreaming of Mario Odyssey. You know what I'm saying, baby? Anyway, and finally, and Nantes says finally. Go to ChiqueroNews.com and give some clicks and love to my boy Caliones. With all that said, thank you again. Long live Nintendo. See you guys. Have a great one, everyone. <laughs>